Randy, I want to get right into it. And, and specifically what the past two years of your life has been, because you've accomplished as much as anybody's accomplished in WWE history. Um, but what you've accomplished most recently, to me, impresses me maybe more than anything you've done, and that is simply the comeback. I mean, spinal surgery right. and hearing the messaging that a doctor gave you is very, very different level of adversity, not just physically, right. but mentally. Oh, God. So how much more do you appreciate when you get to a week, when you're back? Yeah, wow, what a question. I, uh, I don't want to take a second for granted. Right. I look back at, you know, wasted time in my career where I maybe was complacent or bitter about something and, Oh my God, like, I feel like I could never feel like that again. Like, uh, I got a second chance, man. My career was supposed to be over. And uh, lower lumbar surgery, uh, or fu a fusion, a lower lumbar fusion, like, is a pretty serious deal. And uh, Shawn Michaels had one mm -hmm. long time ago. They took bone from his hip, threw it in his spine, and but he had, I think he had to wrestle months later, which is astounding but then he had like a four year break. And four years is a long time for bone to heal, you know, and it just continues to heal. Um, man, times change. So my fusion was a little different. I had, I had the best surgeons in the country. Dr. Uh, Dr. Adam Cantor out in Newport Beach, California, put me back together. And uh, I've got titanium everywhere in there, but the key was they didn't cut through any muscle. So, I don't think that's me. <laughs> uh, the, the key there was that they didn't cut through any muscle. And uh, with my lower back being basically the nucleus of my core, um, I would not be able to return and be an athlete again if they cut through muscle. Now a normal fusion is kind of a hack job. And um, you know, they get, it, they get in there, they get it done, and they're not really worried about, you know, the recovery from the doctor's standpoint because it's 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 usually done on elderly and obese people and to have like a young athlete come in they were able to see that okay inside i had this really bad lower spine but everything around was healthy and strong and they were able to do it and and i it was amazing because i don't think that i've felt this good since i was in my 20s i've had back wow. problems for like 10 years and you know all these guys have their issues but um but yeah the recovery was long it was grueling but when i came back and started moving around i still didn't even quite know if i was going to be able to return to action but about three months of slowly just dipping my toe in the water and feeling it out and eventually taking bumps and then hitting an rko and realizing like i'm good like that realization like it was just I, I can't even explain how. Well, let's dig into yeah. that a little bit because yeah. I find that fascinating. Because yeah. you, you'll hear that perhaps with an NFL running back that has an ACL. The first time I have to really cut hard right. and put that foot in the ground. Right. You'll hear that sometimes with, with a boxer or a UFC fighter of the doubts after you've been knocked out. The first real good flush punch that you've got to take. Right. For you, your style right. is overly power aggressive sure. and, and with vertical. Right, right, so right. So you had to have those doubts. Oh, 100%. Tell us about that. 100%. I, I was, it took me, I'd say, so I came back in November at Survivor Series. That was in November. And a lot was asked of you that night. A, a lot was, right. yeah. And, and, um, the RKO that night. Yeah, that's right. The, the RKO off the top of the cage. Not, not a normal height RKO. No, no, it? no. Yeah, and I, I remember, like, when we were talking during the day, and, uh, uh, the fella from Judgment Day, his name's slipping my mind right now, and I hate it, but a uh, hell of a talent. Uh, he was at the very top of the cage, and we're kind of sussing out the situation. JD? J yeah. Yeah, yeah, JD. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, JD. Um, he's at the top of the cage, and I'm just kind of looking, and you got Hunter there and everybody, and they're like, yeah, we got to do this. This will be great. And I'm like, you know, if he came off the top of the turnbuckle, <laughs> I've done that a bunch. <laughs> And I'm thinking maybe, is that the safe route to go, guys? And I remember them just kind of looking at me, and I was like, this is war games, you're coming back. He's coming off the top. And I was like, shit, okay. <laughs> but it all went down. It's like, it, when you start second uh, guessing yourself in the ring, you know, you're screwed. You know, and I had to just go out there and just have that confidence. But it was, I wasn't there yet. It took me until probably 
couple months ago where I really started to feel like I was back in the groove. But now, like, it, it feels like I never left. It feels, like I said, I, I, my back hasn't felt this good in, in over a decade. And to everybody's eye, and I've heard this a lot with people who, who watch the product, they look at you now physically, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, how does the guy look bigger and better <laughs> than, he's, than he's ever looked? I mean, you, you would, look you amazing would think I'd now. Lose right? Back surgery, okay, let's lose some weight so there's less you know, uh, force on my joints or anything, or I'm carrying around less weight. And I didn't try to gain weight. What happened is I changed my diet a little bit. Um, my diet was always trash, and I kind of, I, I'd, I'd fill in a lot with protein shakes and, mm -hmm. and, and supplements, and I wasn't eating enough whole food. You know, I was kind of just taking the easy route, and um, I, I followed suit with a couple of the guys that I work with that are, like, great with diets and everything, and I started, switched to, like, eating mainly whole foods, and... Uh, but the biggest thing was the, I was able to train in the gym in a way that I hadn't been able to in over a decade. Oh, I gotcha. And uh, so a lot of that weight, like the weights, you know, I put it on everywhere, but a lot's down here where I didn't really have a posterior chain, like my ass and, and hamstrings and everything, they, they weren't activating properly. My quads were taking over. I've got like big quads mm -hmm. and uh, that's because they were doing all the work. And, and my back was just slowly deteriorating. And so now that it's fixed and my body's you know, operating correctly, I was able to strengthen my core and then the weight just started piling on. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I just had the family in Puerto Rico for a few days. We had a chef, I weighed myself, I was 287. Wow. Dude, I've never been even close to that. But no. you're still quick twitch at 287. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a little weird. Like I feel, I feel like it's almost my natural weight. 275 is where I'm comfortable. I'm, <laughs> it's WrestleMania season, usually guys tighten up. Right. I came back with a little bit of a belly, but you know, it's, I, I feel great and I don't even really care what I look like. It's because I feel so good. You know, what, whatever happens here physically, you know, to the, to the eye, uh, I, I'm not really worried about it. I'm, tr I'm training to be healthy in that ring so that when I do want to call it quits one day, it's me doing it and not some doctor telling me, hang up the boots because I already you know got out of that once right I don't want to do it again right you you had that messaging where you thought perhaps that's how this whole thing is going to go and now 100%. I've heard you recently say that when people and listen you know obviously you're sitting back you're a 14 time champion so everybody would make the goal hey having a belt raised up in the air again but you've said if that happens and that very well could be happening immediately sure. it could be happening sure. this sure. weekend it could right. be happening again later this year right but you've said it's longevity and being a full roster guy who's active yeah that is the goal not being yeah. the occasional legacy guy who sprinkles it in a little bit right That's, right right so being healthy helps that a hundred percent and and um like i i have been around a long time this will be my 19th wrestlemania that i performed at wow. um there's two guys that have been in uh performed in more wrestlemanias than me the undertaker at 27 wrestlemanias and Triple H at 23. And then you got Randy Orton at 19. I'm in a nice little group of people there, man. Those are some cool names. Um, but I want to be around. I, I'm, to me, if I can beat Undertaker's record of 27 WrestleManias and still be, you know, healthy and feeling good, like that, to me, that's my goal. When I hear you say that and we think about the longevity of your career, I think about the fact that you have a unique perspective that others don't. So you're equipped when we have this moment in time with sports entertainment to answer certain questions that perhaps others aren't. And I'll just throw this at you. Why is the sport so red hot right now? Gosh, so many factors. I think obviously you have rock coming back and that's putting a, a microscope on our business. He's bringing a lot of fans in. You've got Logan Paul, who's bringing a whole swath of fans. Who over. you're doing business with Of this course, weekend, right? and, and Logan, you know, I don't want to get too, you know, behind the curtain there or whatever, <laughs> but like, hell of a dude. I, I would have not known what to have thought when I first met the guy. Um, but holy shit, he's he's a very mature, yeah. like he, you know, whatever, 
however he came up in that YouTube world, he's that YouTube generation, you know, I, I, I just, like, I have five kids, so, like, I see, like, the transformation, children maturing, and I have a 21-year-old who's just, you know, it's, it's like you're talking to a 40-year-old man, he's just a good, great, mature, good head on his shoulders, and so when I see Logan, and I hear about maybe the, some of the things he did when he was younger, and I see him, like, I'm speaking to him, like, the respect he has for our business, oh, yeah. the way that he looks me in the eye when he's speaking to me, the, the, the way that he wants to learn and wants to be. Uh, there's guys here, there's guys that have been in the locker room throughout my career that are nowhere near as motivated as Logan Paul. I was listening to his podcast a week ago. In the middle of it, uh, probably like 40 minutes into the podcast, somebody was talking to him, your name came up. Okay. And he didn't even have, he, you're the guy, in terms of that respect, he's like, yeah, I don't want to F with him. Like, he's, he's like, that's a big human being who's a veteran guy. So he understands, you know, the hierarchy and you get that yeah. sense right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not even that. He'll, he'll treat the guy in the bottom of the card and then the, the catering staff with respect. Right. And, but and, in the ring, he yeah. understands what he's, you know, hundred who's opposite him. 100%. Right. 100%. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's smart. He's, he's smart a, enough. He's, to, he's, a, right. he's smart and he is one hell of an athlete. And uh, I have never seen, and I mean, everybody says this about him, and I think he hates hearing it because so many people say it, but it's, I mean, he's really amazing and one of a kind when it comes to people on the outside coming in and trying their hand at what we do. You know, he's taken to it very well. Yeah, he, especially some of the aerial stuff. Yeah. Is oh, yeah. Stuff incredible. I could never dream of doing. Well, well yeah. there's other things you do that others couldn't uh, do as well, and that is the mastery of uh, what, in my opinion, is the best finisher there is, right? So I want to get granular for a moment because we talked about it earlier that you come back and you had to hit an RKO that was non conforming. Right. Tell us what it feels like when you know you hit the RKO just right, like that sweet spot God. of the timing, yeah. the perfect land, everything. What does yeah. it feel like? Just like when anything else goes off and you know you got them right in the palm of your hand, it, it's just like that. It, but when, when any of us just do something that just goes down perfectly and you get that reaction, there's no real quite way to explain it. Like, I've been laying there before after an RKO where, you know, maybe I'm, 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 I'm too screwed up physically to make the cover. Right. And we're just laying there and I'm listening to the people and I'm listening to them and kind of deciding on, you know, all right, when will I move? When will I start to make the slow crawl? Like, and I'm listening and just to be in that moment to hear all those people and to be like on center stage with everybody watching you and like Sunday, 80,000 people, like yeah, yeah. it's just, the adrenaline rush that you get and, and just that, that, that like buzz, that natural high you get from being in the ring and connecting with something like that. And, <clears throat> you know, it's WrestleMania. So, you know, I'm gonna try and pull something out of the hat, you know, yeah. that I haven't done before. So like, my, my stuff's not generally very high risk. Um, but Sunday, I'm going to try and pull some shit out. Dude. You know what I mean? Like, and so I'm looking forward to that. Like, like, like Sunday, I've got an opportunity to hit an RKO that I haven't done before and to put 80,000 people on their feet just like, ah, and, and just knowing that we're going to get there and that I'm going to have that possibility of, of shit in the bed or hitting it dead on. Like, oh, when you capitalize on it and you feel that reaction, there's just, there's nothing better, man. Nothing better, Joe. Do, do you watch back your work? I do. Okay. I do. So there often is a moment <coughs> that as Excuse a consumer, me. as the viewer, mm -hmm. is so appreciated that I don't know if you do it subconsciously or if you make a conscious, but you mirror the reaction of the fan sure. when you yourself celebrate your RKO. Right, when right. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. you hit it, the, the sweet spot ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't help yourself. No. Yeah, that, I know exactly what you're you know. I, uh, shit, one time I feel like I was so excited I forgot to win the match. I popped right, up. Right. I, like, yeah. I did it, I did it. I didn't think I was going to do no it. No cover, it doesn't yeah, matter. Oh, shit, I got I to gotta win the match. Um, that, that was with Seth Rollins uh, 10 years ago now where he went for the curb stomp. Right, you I pushed up. up. Yeah. You, you know, we practiced that. Um, he got Gosh. so high on that. Yeah, yeah, he did. And we practiced that and just couldn't hit it. Just couldn't hit it. But you're in a hotel con conference room with a ring set up for you to, like, 
talk about some ideas you want to maybe do at WrestleMania, what have you. And so it's, it's a very cold environment. There's no fans, obviously. And to rehearse something like that is virtually impossible. Right. So there, there's, there's a couple things Sunday where, um, God, a bunch of people are like, man, you need to try, you need to try that once. You know, we got to rehearse that, make sure that you can do it. And it's like, man, I, uh, but if I do that, I know it's not going to work because I don't have the crowd. I don't have, I'm not in the environment. Absolutely. So we got to wait until the day right. when, when we're right there in the middle That's of it. That's not one that you leave in the gym. No. Got, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I, I got one in me. That's you right. Know? And, and so like, that's just, but man, you know, I'm going to bed at night and that's what I'm thinking about. And, and it's just, it's, it's just, man, I'm 44 years. I just turned 44 and it's like, man, I'm just, I'm happy as a pig and shit, man. Just, this is where I want to be and this is what I want to do. And there's like some other options that have come up and like, oh, maybe I can do this too or maybe I can do that too. But it's like, man, after my back got fixed and I got this new lease on, on, on my career, it's like this, I'm right where I need to be. Th th this is what I was meant to do. And, and the confidence level is now back to where, okay, Let's go to work, you know, and, and it feels great, man. Well, it feels great for all of us to experience your comeback. Congratulations on it. Congratulations on yet another WrestleMania for the Viper, the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. Great visit with you. Thank you, Joe.